Hi everybody, for those that don't know me, and there are plenty that don't, but there are some that do, my name is David Ridge and I work for the Community Service within Adults Health and Wellbeing and I'm a Stronger Communities Manager covering the east of Doncaster. Something's on my mind, it's something that I'm very passionate about and uh, that's mental health and in particular how people are supported with mental health and how uh, I think it's important that we should watch out for each other. If people would um, just sort of abide me for a, a few minutes, I just want to sort of put it across um, in my story, and which I hope will resonate with many other people. Well, I was an um, ambitious uh, person, particularly from a work perspective. Worked very long hours, very long days. Um, never thought really what mental health was, how it affected people, it wouldn't happen to me in terms of getting poorly. Um, and then one day, slowly but surely, um, I suppose I started to feel different. I suppose um, my character changed slightly. Um, my wife and my children pointed out to me that I was getting short-tempered, getting quite grumpy. And then I saw, sort of started to sort of question why that was. Albeit at the time, mental health never actually came into my mind. One day I'd, I'd come home having been out for an evening. Believe it or not, uh, my dog, who I love dearly, uh, was playing up a little bit. For some reason, I just completely lost it and really took it out of the dog. And it upset my wife and it upset my daughter. And really, on reflection, uh, soon after, I felt absolutely terrible. And it was my wife that said, you know what, David, why don't you just go to the doctors and just see if um, there's anything they can do, see if, if there's anything wrong. So I suppose it was something as simple as that, really. Mm. And that's what I did. I went and made an appointment with my GP. And... Um, that's when really the journey started in terms of my poor mental health. It's, it's not brave to stay away from the doctors. Uh, it's quite a silly, stupid thing to do. I'll go as far as that. And whilst initially I used to stay away from the doctors, uh, you know, I decided, probably more so at the time for my family, that I would go and at least see if I can get some help and support. My GP basically turned around having uh, listened to my symptoms and me explain how I was feeling and the consequence of that turned around and told me that in her view I was suffering from depression uh, and anxiety. I sort of disagreed with that point and said that simply can't, can't be the case and the conversation to be quite truthful got quite fraught uh, and uh, the GP explained to me that you know I needed some support and help and that uh, initially I needed to take a bit of time out for myself. At that point, having had, I think, 27 years unblemished record working with the local authority in terms of no sickness, I said, absolutely not, I'm fine, I'll be OK. Um, and she was quite blunt with me and she says, you know what, this is part of the problem. You are blind to the fact that you are suffering with your mental health and you know, you need to start listening to me, you need to start listening to your wife and your family and you need to seek some help. My lowest point was, um, you know, I, I used to have some really deep, dark thoughts. I started some different therapy and some different treatment, but even through those early dark days, and I will say very dark days, I used to drive along in the car, and I used to think to myself, there's no way out of this. I had a feeling of apathy, a, a loss of interest in everything, uh, I lost my mojo to, to, to all the interests and hobbies that I got. I started to become quite uh, reclusive and isolated. One day I was driving along and I thought, oh, if I just crash my car and um, injure myself severely, you know, it'll at least then I'll have a reason for feeling poorly. Because I honestly, at the time, felt quite a fraud, really. There was sort of no physical side effects to it, but actually, mentally, I was quite poorly. So I think it was at that point that I realised if I go that next stage, then there would be no return. 
and that's when I really owed it, not just to myself, but to those that love me, those that don't like me really, I suppose, to actually make the effort and try and start to crawl the way back. Um, the high point, or, or the point when I, I realised that um, things started to improve, it was the fact that I um, was, was seeking uh, medical and clinical uh, support, which was helping. I had the love and the understanding of my, my family and my friends and my loved, one, loved ones. Um, and I think the dog. The dog was an absolutely amazing, shall we say, uh, medicine for me. It was better than any antidepressants. It was better than any um, therapies, albeit I don't believe any of those, and I really don't because they're so important for different people. But the dog kept me going. That unconditional love shown, uh, shown by him uh, was amazing. Um, I suppose the other most important factor that helped me to sustain an improvement in my mental health and has done so even to the point of today is having the people around me that are prepared to listen and people that just now and again ask how am I feeling, how am I doing. It's having the ability to share my feelings, to talk to people about the way I am is it's quite amazing really. And sometimes that's not always easy, I understand, for people to do. I went to uh, occupational health and I have to say, and I'm sorry for embarrassing you, uh, Jill Hill in occupational health uh, was amazing. Jill would sit there and simply listen to me, crying, uh, moaning, um, talking about everything that was wrong with the world in my head but she'd sit there and listen. She wouldn't judge, she wouldn't agree, she wouldn't disagree. That was an absolutely amazing fillet in terms of supporting and helping me. I was able to receive uh, counselling support. I also went for cognitive behaviour therapy to learn some self-help. For a time, I decided to take some prescribed medication to, to help with, with the feelings of anxiety and depression that I had. So all those collectively helped uh, me on the road uh, to recovery. But I, I can't emphasise enough, you know, the biggest, most positive thing in all that was, you know, being able to talk to people and for people to listen and just, you know, just listen, yeah. If I'm honest, I, I have good days um, and I have not so good days. At the beginning, I was hoping that I would make this miraculous recovery, but in the real world, that doesn't always happen. But what I've learned to do is I've learned to cope. I've learned to live with uh, depression and anxiety. And I think more importantly, Whilst in the early days it affected my self-esteem, I thought I was a failure, I thought I was weak, I thought I was, 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 was worthless, I thought I let all my colleagues down as a manager. But actually, you know, I realise actually it's quite the reverse. People that have uh, depression, stress, uh, mental health issues generally, perhaps are probably some of the most strongest people uh, that um, walk and, and live a life because of the challenges that, that we have to face. Actually, it's about you know managing those moods, those dark thoughts, those feelings of anxiety. And uh, when I get to that stage where I think I need a bit of help and support here, I'll go and talk to a colleague. So you don't sit there and suffer in silence. If you're feeling low, if you don't even realise the reasons why you are, you know, you have a changing mood, your, your character, your manner might be slightly different, whether it's at home or at work, anywhere. Take a moment, sit down with somebody and have a conversation. Start that journey, start that road back to recovery by talking to somebody. Believe you me, it really does work. Because the alternative, guys, is you know, well, we don't want to go there, and there is no need to go there, there really isn't. You know, one in four people exper experience mental health problems each year. If a colleague that you come across that you're thinking, mm, not something quite right there, ask them if they're okay. You know, 
but don't ask them once because most of us will turn around and say, yeah, I'm fine, I'm okay. You know, think about it and ask them again. And if you ask them after, if you have to ask them again, then, you know, please do so. You don't have to be a professionally trained person. You don't have to be a counsellor. You can simply be a mate, a colleague. Make that effort and be there and talk to somebody. And simply please ask them how they are. Because if that hadn't happened for me, I don't know where I would have been. I'm in a far better place than I was at the start. And that's thanks in, in so much to my friends, my family, and of course my work colleagues.